Hello guys, I'm back again. Welcome to my channel. And uh, luckily I came like an hour early to work. So I'm on, I'm in the break room and I'm gonna see if I can do this really quick. I have like three good books to show you guys. But I got this like, um, I would say like maybe nine years ago. And it's by another good artist. His name is Mike Hoffman. And uh, he made three books and this is very good. Um, what I like about Mike Hoffman, that he reminds me a lot of John Buscema and Frank uh, Frazetta. Uh, the same style and everything. And the only thing about these books is, it's just some of the pages are not, like, you really got to be careful with the pages that they don't rip so easy, you know what I mean? Um, so it's not like, and some books like this one, which I'll show you later on, that the page is a little bit more different. And it has a better texture, I guess. Um, but believe it or not, you know, if you're like me that, um, well, right now I stopped drawing on my books because I don't draw my books anymore. Um, half of my books, like my early, early books, I used to draw on them, but not anymore. Like um, I would say half of the stack of books that I have, they're not drawn like I used to draw. So anyway, let's get going. Mike Hoffman. Um, I don't know if he does anything for comics or he, I think he works uh, sort of like independent by himself. Most comic book artists actually do their, their own stuff, like their own world and stuff. So these are really good books. This one is called The Secrets of Drawing Fantasy Figures. This is called Secrets of Drawing Tricks, Tips and Techniques by Mike Hoffman. And this one is called More Secrets of Drawing by Mike Hoffman. So let's start with the first book that I got. I think it was this one that I got. This is the first book I got. Or actually it was this one. I'm not really sure. Let me check the years. Um, it could be that he made the years. Um, well, it doesn't matter because um, as long as I show you, like the last book was this one. This was the last book, I think. Okay, so let's get started with this book first. And uh, we're going to show you, I did draw um, some of the pages on the first few pages. You know, I do, do, I did do some sketches. I didn't mess the book up. I just did a couple of, you know, sketches in pencil. And I, I might, I don't know, go back and erase it. But they're very light pencil that I did. Most of the book um, is not drawn, so... This is basically the anatomy, the skeleton, everything you need to know. And what I like about it, it's very classic, you know, very classic. And this is the actual classic bodybuilder. Um, it shows you all kinds of techniques, how the muscles work on the body, different directions. So this has a different way of explaining pretty much like other books do. But you can tell it's very Frazetta style. It's very... Um, I would say um, uh, John Buscema style, maybe a little bit like Neil Adams. I don't know. I don't know where to consider Mike Hoffman like Neil Adams. Um, I would probably consider uh, Mike Hoffman more like Frazetta, I would guess, and John Buscema. And like I said, pretty much like I've been showing you guys, the spinal cord, the gesture line, the balance line. This is a really cool, uh, cool technique, how to figure out the uh, the movement of the body. This is a great way of figuring this out. Here we have the bone structure of the head. Let me um, I'll be back. It's just my nose is stuffy. Uh. It's the air conditioning that I'm very allergic to high air conditioning. And they got the air conditioning here pretty strong. But I got to get used to this because Miami, everywhere I go, there's a lot of air conditioning. Um, so it's kind of affecting my uh, nasal passages, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, let's go. Let's get back to the book. 
So, you know, it's got so many ideas how to do the uh, faces. This is pretty much more like, I would say, kind of like Bridgman, George Bridgman style. And you can see the planes, you see? You know, you can start with an oval and start with the planes. And uh, this is a very cool technique, the way he did this. Let me get some... So I'm going to give you an idea how he did this. Um, and it's pretty much what I've been showing you guys. So I'm going to do a straight out uh, front view. And I'm going to try to do exactly what he did. Again, you know, you do the segments for the features. Here would be the, uh, the eye line. Actually started out here, the eye line, the brow line, nose. Mouth and chin. So what he does is um, he does the segments first, the little tiny vertical lines for the eyes. That's the way I think he does it. Sort of like rectangle shapes, like that. And then uh, he does the front. Now this is pretty much of what I've been showing you guys. You know, the planes. It's always, that's what makes your, the, the face, you know, the planes of the face, you know, see? <clears throat> Almost every method that there is, is very, very similar. It just has a little bit of a different tone to it, a different uh, a feel to it, I guess, you know? And then right here would be, sort of like you slice out half of that face. But I can tell he added more mass in back this side of the head right here. The ears right here. And then, like usual, either the pyramid shape for the nose or the triangle. So that's what pretty much what he did on this right here. And then the profile, um, you could use the skeletal. There's a sense of fleshing of the outline. You can see the fleshing of the outline. And like always, you can actually do the profile on a box shape. And uh, little by little, you start figuring, you know, the measurements. You could do the X actually works. So the X would be, first let's do the uh, block shape. You do the X. And like always, whenever I uh, review a book, I like to kind of show you guys how it's done. Most reviews on books they don't do that so at least i give you an idea how it's done like that and then over here would be the eyebrows and then the nose will be here like that then the ears would be here somebody's sending me a message oh my friend louisa okay so yeah, that's how you do pretty much the profile. See? So it's a different technique. You could do the block shape and the X at the same time. So it actually, it helps out. You just gotta remember the proportions, try to you know get the proportions right. Now, this I never, you know, figured this out. I think this has to do with borders. Doing borders, uh, for example, let's say if you want to do um, a, a center of a picture, you're doing the shape. Pretty much like in the Marvel way. You know, the Marvel way actually shows you, like you could do all kinds of uh, shapes in order to do the center drawing. So there's some things here that I got to review again on this book. It's not going to be easy. And the same thing, like, with there's a lot of penciling here, but very lightly. So you really got to focus how he drew this. These are all monsters that he created. Creatures. Cartoon creatures. You can see he draws a lot like Frank Vazetta, that certain style, like Frank Vazetta. I still haven't seen anybody else, um, other than Mike Hoffman, um, do any stuff that has to do with Frank Vazetta style. 
I would love to see some artists. If anybody knows anything, well, you know, link it to me or whatever. Just give me an idea of Frank Fazetta techniques and methods. But it has to be, you know, it has to do with gestures and figure drawing. And that's what I want to see. And if you're in my group, you can actually share it also. Um, I want to see some more Frank Vazetta methods and techniques. If anybody knows anything, you can actually share it in my group. And I really appreciate it. Because I love Frank Vazetta the way he draws. There is some type of nudity, but it's more like cartoon nudity. Well, that is why I have, well, uh, actually a, uh, an age limit on YouTube over 18 to see these type of drawings. Well, unfortunately, YouTube and uh, Facebook, they're very strict with uh, nudity and stuff. But um, yeah, it, it kind of sucks. But that's the only way you can actually learn how to draw the body, you know, just by nudity and stuff. You can see this is a great way in forming um, the gesture of the body. For example, let's do her. Um, the way I would do this, um, I would start, like always, the gestural line first, and then do the shape of her body, like that. Sort of like an hourglass. If you look at it, it's sort of like an hourglass. And then a V-shape. But not a V-shape like this, like I usually do. A V-shape that kind of like spreads out. Pretty much what you see here. And then the next thing he does, he starts uh, doing a line like this another line this way and notice that he does another gesture line but closer to the contour of the leg so my greatest guess is that he does something like this and I've seen this done also by Romero does stuff like this let me get a chair and get comfortable here So let me get a pen also. Okay, this is what he does, people. It's very, very simple. Pretty much what I've been showing you guys. In his work, he doesn't do uh, a gesture line, you know what I mean? So you got to actually do that. And then you form the body of the woman, sort of like an hourglass, make her look like a very sexy body. And then the V-shape, instead of doing it like this, the V-shape should be kind of like of the opening where the legs are, see? And then you do a line for the leg, another outline for the other half of the leg. So then if you look at this, you know, he's covering all the rest of the body. Now, the proportions are not perfect, perfect, of course, but this is just a quick demonstration. So I'm gonna try to make it a little bit better so you guys can understand. So you bring the leg all the way down and the other leg, nearly touching where the outline is, you see? And then the boobies, the breast, and the head. And then we'll do the... Uh, the arms like that so that's another great way of doing this now this one if you study this this is sort of like a pelvic shape you see it's a you see the torso area right here and that's this over here and then you see the pelvic and you see these little dots that's another way of figuring and I've seen this a lot done by a lot of cartoonists and I think I gave you a a demonstration that when you're doing for shortening you could do stuff like that so let's do something like that and then dots like joints another joint here and then another joint there and those dots all you got to do is start you know you could do the lines if you want or you could just simply start doing the shapes We're doing the contour. But you can tell that he does, <clears throat> excuse me, some type of gesture line on some of the, um, just like um, Gil Kane, um, the, the demonstrations that I was showing you yesterday that the pelvic 
is something like this. Uh, it's sort of like a, a pelvic shape, and then he does sort of like an outline or like an oval kind of, and then he does the rest lines. Here's a joint, and then he does the uh, sort of like a oval again, and then he does sort of like lines for the bottom part of the leg. So that's the way um, Gil Kane does his uh, figures. So this is pretty much the same, except that you're not doing too many lines on this. So in other words, what he did was something like this, like this, like that, like that, like that, like that, see? Okay, so let's get going because time flies and I gotta go to work in an hour. So this is really cool. And if you look at this, this is really amazing. It looks very, very like Frazetta style. Very amazing stuff. This is really cool stuff. And this is another way, like I was showing you guys, how to make your feet tip over by making a line like this. Um, now, I didn't do that the other day with you guys, but I'm going to give you an idea how he did this. Say this is the uh, where the heel is, right? And this is part of his foot. And if you want to make it tip over, you do back here, the back bone of the foot. This is the front part right here, and then you start shaping the bottom of the foot, and there's the foot right there, see? And this position, believe it or not, it actually helps, uh, especially if you're drawing women, you know? You start out with the center first, like that, see? And then you start working with the shape of the foot, like that. And then you uh, do the heels. There you go. See? So that's another good way. Uh, oop, I hope I didn't damage this. Nope, no. Nope. Because sometimes the ink goes through. So I don't want to mess it up. All right, so we got more figures here, which is really cool. Flipping. Like you're flipping the character. You can tell the opposite from this to this. Like the front view and to the back view. See? So he's giving you like different ideas, like here's the front view and the back view, how to do, and you should practice this uh, when you're doing figures poses. Here's a front view over here that you can see the, the gesture's going like this, and this gesture is going like this, you see? So it's actually showing you both ways, back view and front view. Very sexy pose, I must admit. And then at the same time, the same with the barbarian guy. You have the front view here and the back view. You have the woman sitting on this part right here, and then you have the other woman sitting on the back view. Now, that is really cool, um, the way um, he did this. Uh, here we have more of a uh, sort of like a functional light when you're doing light and shade. And I need a lot of practice doing light and shade. I'm going to see if I can do something with this, but I'm going to probably do my own character. But this would be really cool to do on a drawing and stuff, so... So I'm going to try to do a little bit of everything here and show you guys how the book is done. Only which ones, I think I did this right here, trying to experiment this. Now, this is a sort of like, a, kind of like a Loomis. I don't like the way it's actually done, but he's giving you an idea that is sort of like a Loomis uh, head, like a head drone, you know, step by step. Uh, but the problem with this is that it's not, close to Loomis, or how Abdon J. Romero would probably explain it better, I guess. This is a good um, explanation how the shape of the face, especially the, the jawline that actually goes in, and then you have the cheekbones over here, so that's a very good explanation here. This part here is the bottom of the mouth over here, the eyes, nose, and the mouth. So in other words, you could do stuff like, um, I'm gonna see if I can do something like this, but I, what I would do, I would start off with an oval. That's what I would do. Oh, I kind of messed up there. Let me see if I could do this. So yeah, I would probably start off with an oval and then kind of like uh, here would be the eyes right here the eye sockets, the nose, 
then I would probably do pretty much right he, like he did over here. So I would probably end up doing the structure of the bone like this, all the way down to where the chin is, then the mouth line here. So that's a very good practical way and just give the head more form on top. So that's another good way of doing a head shape using the skeletal part. And then right here, you can tell that he does the jaw. So the first basic thing that you guys should consider is doing first the vertical line, the horizontal line, and then the sockets for the eyes, and then the nose, and then you do the shapes for the jaw right there, and then the top of the skull right there, see? And then everything starts uh, taking place, the bottom of the jaw, all the way down to the chin, see? So that is really cool. Um, that's a good way of doing, a, you know, a face using the skeletal. All right, let's go on to the next page. This is really cool right here. This is sort of like a shortcut. You're visualizing, and pretty much like I've been showing you guys, that you visualize the forms. You visualize the torso, you add the head, and it's showing you, you see? Little by little, it's like everything is coming, you know, in place. You could use this and then do lines for the arms, you know, and for the legs too, you know? You could do that if you want. That actually works out. Here we have more gestures, origins of insertions, more tips. Here's uh, the, the regular gesture. As you can see, he started off with a regular uh, torso oval. He did a small oval here for the top of this big pelvic over here. That's another way of doing this. And the legs, the bone shapes right here. Bone shapes down here to, uh, on the arms. Now the proportions are not perfect on this, of course, but he's giving you an idea how to do this. Then from there on, you start doing the outline of the whole figure as you see over here, you see? Drawing from the outside in, you see, is like a releasing a sculpture figure from a block of stone. So he's giving you some ideas. Again, you can actually do figures by pretty much like I showed you yesterday with uh, how to draw the Marvel way. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that I was demonstrating the, the block form figures and then I added like um, uh, perspective lines. Well, this is sort of like the same thing. You can do lines like this, these are sort of like triangle lines. You can tell there's a triangle line here. There's another triangle line here, another triangle line here and another triangle line here, see? D doing uh, the figure drawing. And this is really cool, especially when it comes to perspective. You have the foreground over here and the way, way background over here. And then you could do anything in the, in the middle ground if you want. But this is really good, it's a great technique. You start off with this, the line here, another line here do a perspective. It's kind of like if you were doing a, a perspective box, like a box shape, and then you add a figure here. So let me give you a quick demonstration how he did this. Uh, I think this is how he did this, not really sure. Uh, say uh, we do a, sort of like a box shape like this, sort of like um, perspective, right? So uh, here's a box shape right here. We'll start normal right here. And then, of course, this one goes back like that. So you see these two lines here? So he did first the foreground figure here, right? The foreground figure here. And then the background figure right around here. See? And if you want, you could add another, you know, like make another line back here like that, and then probably make another person back here or something. But please be careful. If you want, you know, try to measure with uh, the vanishing point. Maybe that might help better. But this one might work. It might not, I don't know. Here's an, a quick demonstration right here. You see the foreground here and the background right here. 
uh, you can see the perspective line. It's a sort of like that's a great way of figuring how to make a person foreground and the background. There's some sense of, <clears throat> excuse me, something here is happening here. The man is talking to her and she's explaining something. You have a very good point of view here. So I like this one better than this. I guess this one would probably be easier to do if you come to think about it. Yeah, I think it would be easier to do this one. Just add the lines and sort of like a perspective view and do the foreground and then the background. So going on to the next page, um, the kite shape. Yeah, everybody knows that the torso, the upper part of the body is sort of like a kite shape. Like many uh, comic book artists actually start with, you know, a regular, I would say more like a triangle shape, but he actually says a kite, you know, kite shape. I don't know why he actually did it that way, but that's another way of uh, doing uh, the figure by using a kite shape or a triangle shape and then the legs and this and that and then you start forming you know the uh the body and all that stuff so yeah it's um pretty much that's what he means with the kite shape there so i'm gonna go a little faster because i still got the other books to show you or maybe i might do part i don't know do it by parts i guess i don't know let's see what happens Maybe they'll just do two books, faces again, lines, practice doing that. This is very important, guys. Remember, it's always good to practice. And it gives a lot of great movement and motivation and uh, the motor skills of your hand. Just, you know, practice doing scribbling. And, and you'll be surprised with scribbling, you could do all kinds of designs. In a scribble form, you can see something happening. You know what I mean? Whether it's planets or whatever, you know. You know, usually the secret of nature and creation is really actually spiral, the Fibonacci and all that stuff. I really go by those rules, even though I am sort of like atheist in a way, but I really do think that that's the magic that actually does creation by using scribbling and the spiral technique, you know, stuff like that. And believe it or not, with a spiral, you could actually create a circle. That's it. And with a spiral, you can actually do a leg like that, see? So you can do it with a spiral, a leg. So it is what it is, people. You'll be surprised at things you can do with spirals and scribbling lines, and including cross-hatching lines like this, see? So this is, has a great explanation of everything. You can see the contour here starts off with the uh, center of the body. Here's the V-shape for the crotch area, and then the outline of the body goes out this way, and then from there it starts. Of course, this is not a perfect drawing, but, you know, it's just uh, a quick explanation of, because I'm pretty sure he does this, and I've seen the way he works. He does really, really good stuff. It's just when he did this book, and pretty much when I do my construction books, I kind of do blah, 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 whatever, and just do whatever I can. This is really cool, people. Um, I like this. Um, this is like you're doing the gesture, but in parts. Like, for example, here's the head. Let me see, bring it a little bit closer. You can see this because it's kind of light, you see? So this is sort of like you, the head, the torso, the uh, hip area, and then the joints. And with these joints, all you got to do is connect the body and start forming, you know, your character and stuff. So <clears throat> it's a good way of doing foreshortening too, you know? For example, um, there are many um, videos that I've done showing you guys doing um, sort of like foreshortening. Uh, for, let's see. do something here quick. Torso, pelvic area, which is the hip area, joints for the shoulders, and then a big joint here, the joint for the bottom foot, another joint here, then another joint there, see? And then with, I'm going to do this in ink so that way you'll see the difference here. This is the torso. This is the hip area, which is the pelvic. This is the kneecap, right? And this is the feet. This is the kneecap here and the feet. So with that, you start little by little, um, either doing the, uh, you start working from the top, so we're like a bean shape. You're working from the core of the body. And then little by little, you can start forming, you know, 
You could use the line if you want, you know. But oh, usually the one that's foreshortened, don't use lines. Just use an oval like this, you see? Like an oval and then you do the rest of the foot all the way down. And then you can see the difference from here all the way down to your feet, you see? And then you can do the arms. You can make it. Now, if you're doing a foreshortening, like coming at you, do it this way, see? Like this is actually like kind of like perspective. So that's a good way of doing, <coughs> excuse me, perspective. So it's very simple because once you have that, you're visualizing the shape is actually coming towards you. And then the hand, the palm of the hand, the finger here, and then the other finger here, and then make it kind of like coming at you and stuff. So you can do that. But please be careful with when you're doing um, perspective also with the hand, because you want to make the hand big, you know. And you got to like do the right anatomy of the hand. So you start going that way, and then the head, you know, leave the head for last. Because I usually like to leave the head for last. So this actually works out, um, and that's what this is, people, um, the way the, the body is formed. So let me see. This one also is made out of the block cylinder shapes. And here's another one, too, which is uh, pretty interesting. It's sort of like a, an, a skeleton pelvic. So, you know, you can start off, like, in the center line, uh, the torso area, and then do a line like that. So I'm going to do it in ink so that way you guys can see a little bit more clear because inking you see more, more details. And then you do sort of like a pelvic like that. But like an open, it's like kind of like a, like instead of doing a heart like that, you're doing an open heart. That's how uh, the pelvic is done on this demonstration right here. So then after that, you start doing the legs like that. And then this leg this way, this other leg going this way. And this arm here. And always, always leave the head for last. I always leave the head for last. And then once you have that, when you have all the fundamentals done, the basic parts of the body, you're going to work from the inside and to the outside. That's it, you know? And remember that the pelvic is sort of like an, uh, an open heart shape like that, so. Or a broken heart. I actually see it as a broken heart. Oh, he's got a broken heart. Okay, so then after that, you start doing the um, the shape of the body, see? Like that, all the way down. You start creating. You can do the scribbling technique if you want. And believe it or not, um, Hoffman does a lot of scribbling, which I don't know if it's on this book, but it could be on the second book. But let's see if we have time, I will show you that. So let's go a little faster. Here's another gesture over here. You can see the a very good gesture line here for this action here. That is awesome right here. I like the way he did that. Very cool stuff. <clears throat> muscles, muscles, muscles. And this is really cool the way he did this, pretty much like the foreshortening. You can see there's a sense of foreshortening here and the way he actually did the outline of the arm and also the leg, look at that, see? It's really cool, it's a cool idea. So it's actually giving you an idea that the foreshortening leg over here is really coming at you just by visualizing these lines. You don't really, you don't really have to draw these lines, you just visualize it. When you have a good visual effect, if you have a good uh, an eye view for these things, trust me, you'll be able to get this. And since I've been drawing for years and years, I actually see these things in my head. Shapes, cylinders, I don't even have to draw them sometimes. But just to show you guys, sometimes I got to give you demonstration with lines and spirals and all that stuff, you know, just to give you an idea how everything is done. This is really cool over here, the profile. There's all types of profiles, like I've been telling you, different shapes of uh, profiles. You can see that this face is going inward, and this face is sort of like a straight face, and this face is all, uh, sort of like coming out. So. You can, see, you can see the gesture of the front view here and 
This one is going back, see? You see the difference? I don't know if you can see that because, yeah, I guess, let me focus this just a little bit better. Yeah. So yeah, that's what he's giving, you know, he's giving an idea about when you're doing profiles. This is a great technique in drawing, you know, uh, say four characters doing a conversation or talking, or they're just standing around, say like, Maybe these three guys are spies and they're like probably looking around. She's looking this way. And this guy's in the front looking this way. And this guy's looking this way. They could be like espionage spies, you never know. And this is a great technique in doing this. You see, do a circle, do a head over here, another head over here, and another head over here. That is excellent. I like this technique. I should practice this more often. And then this is also good. You can see the sense of a circle here. And then another person standing here, the foreground. And I would say the middle ground or the background. But you can see the circle is helping you. You visualize it. You visualize the circle. Or you could just draw very lightly, like a ghost image. Like you can hardly see it. You don't even have to worry about erasing it afterwards. You do sort of like a simple line like that. That's it. You see how I did that line right there? You can't, you can't even see it, you know? Especially in a camera, you can't see it. But you see, all you gotta do is just draw those lines very ghostly, and then you'll see everything starts taking place. You can see the gesture, and pretty much like I explained to you guys before, the gesture going all the way to the center of the body, and more gesture coming out this way. Sort of like three lines of gestures, you know, just to figure out the pose of your body. And like always, I always recommend everybody to use reference. It's always important to use reference. Here we go with the scribbling. Scribbling, you actually start with the uh, gesture, of, of course, the skeleton gesture. And then you start adding more scribbling on the body, you see? Now, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration with this one. And I know I showed you already, guys, you guys already doing uh, gestures, uh, actually scribbling. It's like if you were molding a wire figure with clay. And that's what this is, people, you know? So, you know, like say, I'm gonna do a front view. But notice that when he did this, he did the shape of the body at the same time. So he's giving you a, a, you know, a hint of the muscles over here, <clears throat> the rib cage over here, and the buttocks over here, right? And then after that, he starts doing scribbling, you know? And forming the whole body and stuff. Starting sort of like inserting you can see the lines coming out inserting and sort of like scribbling shapes Everything is all scribble scrabble until you get the right form of the body So that's a that's another way of doing uh, comics, especially uh, John Buscema does stuff like this also So let's say let's do this character over here scribbling. So I'm gonna do it more bigger so you guys get an idea of what I am showing here Torso and then we'll do sort of like a pelvic shape, like that. And then we'll do the lines, you know, for the legs. Sort of like, you know, cone shapes if you want. And then I'm gonna see if I can get that pose. His arm is sort of like going back. I don't know if I'm doing it the right way, but anyway, you guys leave me a comment. So, okay, we got the pose right there. And uh, we're going to do this in, in ink. So we have a hint over here, like that. Sort of like cone shapes. And I usually leave the arms for last and then the head for last. Okay, so now we're going to do pretty much what he does, scribbling. So i got to be careful. I don't want to draw ink my book here. So, okay, so from there, we start doing scribbling. We'll start with the center of the body. Always start with the center of the body first. It's like you want to make sure that you start with the core of the body. And when I say core of the body, it's the center of the body. Then you do the shoulders, right? And then little by little, you start working with the arms, scribbling. See how I'm doing? I'm scribbling, scribbling, like this, scribbling, 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 scribbling. 
Okay, so it's pretty much uh, getting in shape. And then I do the rest, scribbling, scribbling, inserting out, inserting out, scribbling, 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 scribbling. scribble here, you scribble. You scribble here, you scribble there, you scribble. For some reason, something, I'm in a good mood today. I don't know why. It could be because I'm going insane. Anyway, just playing with you guys. But anyway, that's how you actually do the, the body by using scribbling. Let's see. And I can't wait when Hoffman makes more books I'll be the first one to buy his books. See how simple that little by just doing a few stuff only, like for example, you work with the gesture, the, the torso, the pelvic area, and then the lines, the gesture lines for the legs and the arms. And then after that, you start creating scribble. And then from the scribble, you start forming your figure. So that's what this is, people. That's what this is, and that's also done in uh, How to Draw the Marvel Way, the book. All right, so let's, uh, here's another one. It's really cool. I like that pose. That's a real cool, cool pose, so let's do that one, scribbling. Let's get another piece of paper. Uh, this one's done already. And then what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do uh, maybe one more book, and then I'll leave the third book for, the, for, another, for another session, I guess. So let's do this pose over here, which when I get started drawing, forget it, I just, it never ends. So I'm going to do th those same techniques, doing those little um, joints instead of doing the lines, because this is, you can see this sort of like a foreshortening over here. And then this arm coming straight out. And then this part of the body, but I don't want to really confuse you guys, so I might as well make the shapes over here because this arm is coming towards us in this hand. Okay, so now I'm going to do the rest of the body and I'm going to do the stick figure form. This time I'm going to use a stick figure. I'm going to use the stick figure this leg give it form because that's gonna actually help me form the leg so it's it looks a little bit like it not too much but just the only problem is that my figure looks like it's cr crunching a little bit more so let's do this in ink so you guys get an idea what I am doing here on this one I started out the head first I don't know why but it, I just just decided to start the head first. Usually I usually start the, with the body first. And then right here I do the rest of the body right here, then the stick right here, another line here for the pelvis, the stick line over here for the leg, and this leg coming this way, and this leg coming this way here. So I'm going to add a circle for the pelvis, pretty much like the Romero technique. But now what I could do is I'll start doing scribbling form. I'll start scribbling the form of the body. The crotch area, just a little bit low. Scribble, scribble, and scribble of this part of the torso, sorry, the shoulder. It's like if you were working with clay on a, on a wire figure. That's what this is, people. You just got to take your time. Don't rush. Figure out all the body parts. And then little by little, you'll have your figure done. So you can do it that way if you want. So let's uh, continue with the rest of the book. This is really neat the way he did that. I like that. Here's uh, some cool stuff that has to do with gesture and bones at the same time. Uh, let me see this one. 
Oh, here's a um, stylization. If you want to do some style on your characters, it'll give you an idea. It explains pretty much over here. Um, super imposition, kind of like composition. Figuring how you're going to pose your figure by using block techniques. It's pretty cool, interesting. And this over here is the torso. So he's giving you an idea of everything. This is another way of figuring the figure by doing spirals and curves. I did this. This is stuff that, uh, that's why he made extra pages uh, to do more notes stuff. So when I did his technique, I, I started practicing myself by doing the scribbling technique. Like, so I, the way I did this is I started just with the regular, you know, stick figure. And then I started working with the scribbling, the V shape. Then I added something like this. Let me give you an idea. When I first started, I started like this. Here's the pelvic and then the leg the other leg and the arms and then the head. So that's the way I usually sometimes I would do it if I were to do the uh, scribbling technique. And what I do is sometimes I do kind of like small little ovals like that, just to give it a, a general shape of, some artists actually do that too. Kind of like that book I showed you, that fantasy book, except that you're doing form, but I'm doing more like scribbling forms, oval scribbling like that. So this will be the torso and then the upper shoulders right here. And then what I do is I start scribbling the form, always the core of the body first. The V shape for the crotch area. And then I start doing ovals, inserting ovals from that part of the pelvis area. So I've shown you pretty much um, on some of these other videos that I've done on basic scribbling. Like that, see? So you could do the figure like that. All right, let's go to the second book. I still, uh, yeah, I got half an hour left, so. All right, this one, we'll leave the third book for another session. So let's keep this page in just in case we need to do some demonstrations. And um, let's put this one away. All right, this one is The Secrets of Drawing Fantasy Figures by Mike Hoffman. And, uh, yeah, this is really cool. This, I'm going to go a little faster. As you can see, it's all gesture, see? So pretty much on every book that he's done, he, he does not leave out the figure drawing. It's like so, there's always something new. That's what I like about Mike Hoffman. They all give you more ideas how to do gestures. Here's another way of doing gestures. That's another practical way of doing gestures. Here is sort of like um, the scribbling kind of technique with ovals. This is also by using shadow silhouettes. You could actually do your figures by um, using silhouettes. Now this will be a little bit complicating but um, it's pretty easy. It's just, you know, you're actually working. But like, like always, start with the center of the body first, and then you do the rest, you know? So the way I would probably do this is like kind of like this. I would probably, let's see if I can do this pose right here. I'll start with the center of the body first, and then I'll start scribble, you know, not scribble, but, you know, sort of like do silhouettes. But I don't know if this might work for you guys. <clears throat> oh, my voice is going. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All right. 
some cran cranberry juice will do the trick. All right, now, okay, now, you know, you do sort of like shadows. Um, it's like you're doing a silhouette. And then, of course, the head, like that, see? And then, you, little by little, you know, you start, it's gonna be a woman, you can see the shape is sort of like a woman. And the torso, you can make it a little bit smaller because it's gonna be a woman, and then make the, the shape of the woman more bigger. Give it more shape, like that. Maybe do the crotch area around there. You, you start seeing a little by little, but this really takes a lot of practice to do this one. It's not easy to do this one, I would guess. Maybe it might work for you guys, who knows, I don't know. Leave me your comments. I wanna see comments, please tell me um, uh, what you think of these techniques. Um, and if you think I'm going by the right way or just let me know. And I want to hear, uh, you know, um, comments from uh, regular Americans uh, that that know everything about American comics. Um, or anybody from any country that knows anything about American comics. Leave me your comments, please. You know, it's just, I wanna know um, if the American classic way is better. Um, to me, like I said, I'm more into the classic American comics. So far, it's, it's you know, it's getting formed, but it takes a lot of time, this technique. Okay, so that's this over here. Now this one is sort of like um, if you were doing sort of like uh, oval shapes. So that one I already showed you that one. I think I showed you that one already, but anyway, let's keep going on. Here's a, another great way figuring the height of the figure, the balance. Here's a very cool explanation of the gesture line. You can see that this right here, he did something like this. He did the gesture line like that. Then instead of doing the shoulder, he did the arm coming out this way, the other arm sort of like coming this way. And then from there on, he starts forming the body. Now, I don't know if this actually works, but actually the gesture line is what actually helps improve the shape of your body. Or you could do it the, the way I do it. I would do the balance line better like that. That's a really cool way of doing, you know, gestures and poses. This is another form of doing this right here, see? Just like you're seeing these lines. There's more lines over here. Here's the block shape. This is a real cool picture. Sort of like Viking kind of. Silhouettes. That's important in a comic book. Now you can tell this is sort of like Frazetta style. Very, very futuristic stuff, like Frazetta fantasy stuff. This is a cool way of doing um, the, the figure, uh, starting like pretty much like I've been showing you guys. You start with the torso, the torso, the weapon, and the pelvis area. And then when you do that weapon, you're actually doing, you're connecting the hands, the arms. Here's a sword. And then you're actually doing the character holding the sword. So it's sort of like you're visualizing this. So that's a very cool way of doing action or poses, especially when it comes to weapons. That's pretty neat the way he did that, I like that. Over here, check it out the ax, the way he does the, um, holds the ax right here. That's a cool drawing of a dragon. I like that.
you can tell that's sort of like Frazetta style. Definitely Frazetta style. And John Buscema. Here we have another gesture figure. This is this. This is this. And all you got to do is just do, you know, the outline or you could just scribble it in. The contour of the body. Do the forms, you know. This is a good technique of the circles, pretty much like the other book, you see? The circle techniques. The L shape. You can see the L shape, an upside down L shape, you see? The, you have the foreground character here and the background character here. You can see there's a sense of um, perspective also. Really cool stuff. This is another good technique, the X. The character here, the foreground character, spreading her legs. She's ready to attack this monster, which is the other X over here. You have the foreground and the background. By using <clears throat> letters, the X, the triangle technique is really effective. And uh, I really recommend you guys to uh, look at uh, David Finch's uh, composition. That's really cool. I was amazed. I was really impressed when I saw that video by David Finch. He does great comics, and he really explains everything pretty well. Here we have the diagonals, the, the cross technique. That's pretty cool. You can see by doing the cross, here's another character here the, on the foreground and on the background, the guy lying back here. Here's a, a sort of like a slanted triangle, kind of. And you see more lines here to indicate, indicate the plant over here. Here we have two circles. Oh, I would say this would be more like an eight the number eight and you can see that there's some type of uh, movement here with this circle down here and this circle appears a little bit smaller so he's giving you an idea of the difference from this to this from the picture's point of view and here's a cool one the s technique it's like you see here's the foreground here the middle ground and the background, you see, the S curve is really cool. It tells you pretty much what to do if you read. I really, really recommend you guys to get this book. Really, I recommend it. It's, it's um, you know, some of the proportions are not, not, per not perfect. Because when you do construction books, I notice in a lot of construction books, by a lot of books that I've gotten, they're not perfect. But when you master it, you can make it perfect. Trust me. Um, demos. This is another way of doing uh, figure drawing, you see? It's like, uh, this is kind of, kind of reminds me of David um, Foychuk's technique that, um, which I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna try to do it this way. So what he does is, you know, he starts with the, the basic parts of the body, which is the torso and the pelvic area, the V shape for the crotch area there, and then he does uh, the circle here, another circle here, connects the lines. Then he does pretty much like that fantasy book that I showed you, sort of like, you know, forms like that. A hint of a line there. And then, of course, it's just a little bit bigger there. It gives a hint of this arm. You can tell that every part of the gesture has some lines and some forms so that's what he does here that when he does the gesture he does some type of form line here then he does a form here another form here for the hands and then another form here for the pelvic area sort of like a box shape and then he does this sort of like a, a sort of like a crotch like that and then he does a joint here, another joint here. He connects the lines. And that's how he does this method right here. And then like always, I would definitely leave the head for last. And then he does this like that. Sort of like a hint, the bottom of the arm there. And then so it's not all, you know, gesture lines and stick figures. 
you know so that's the way he uh, does that which is pretty cool and then you start doing all the rest of the details so let's go on this is really cool doing ink and I definitely need a lot of practice with ink that is awesome I love the way he did that very very John Buscema and very uh, Frazetta style very Conan style too like um, Viking style. This is also made by um, forms. You can tell it's made mainly done by forms. Tells you pretty much everything you gotta do, see. The inking is phenomenal. It's just cool. I like, I like, I like the way he did the uh, grays on this. Awesome. I need a lot of practice with grays, doing grays. So far, I'm getting pretty good with the ink, but I need to do stuff like this. Definitely need a lot of practice. But everything has to do with time, people. That is really cool right there. Very cool stuff. This is the uh, actual gesture to this. And there's a video that I saw by him that's really cool. He did a gesture and then he put it uh, on top of a light box and put another piece of paper and then he started refining his gesture way, way better. So that's another cool way of doing this. These are his books, which I definitely have to get sooner or later. But mostly finish inks that he's done. All right, it's already 15 minutes. I gotta. I only have 15 minutes left, so I'm just gonna stop here. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching my videos. I gotta get to work soon, and I really appreciate that if you leave me some comments and tell me if these books are good. I really recommend it. These three books by uh, Mike Hoffman are really good. And then maybe tomorrow I'll do something with this guy, Dick Dargiano. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Dick Giardano. It's an Italian name, but he's a comic book artist that actually worked for DC Comics. And I will do that tomorrow. So keep practicing. Good luck with your artwork. And happy drawing.